my third topic then is new programs. Um, so we're going to be doing some new programs. So yeah, it's been another thing that's been really cool over this past year is that something which we'd all which we'd started a couple years back and which had been sort of happening um, and kind of growing organically has grown into something that I don't know that really makes me happy. And that is the you know the the, the free public programs that we run. Um, I find the breadth of our public offerings really delightful. Um, I, um, and, not, and not just our public, of all of our offerings. That is, I like the fact that we have, you know, our really great credit courses for students, you know, who are, you know, serious about, you know, professional study. And we also have these more informal uh, programs uh, that are open to the public. Um, it's just such a great balance. It allows us to be generous and open to everybody uh, while still being rigorous and academically serious. Um, and it's also very practical as well. Of course, the, the the public programs that we run serve as the foundation of our fundraising efforts, as they have from the beginning. I mean, it's it's really great, right? Because I mean, we're a nonprofit school, um, and we're a nonprofit school which is determined to keep tuition prices as low as humanly possible. We'd have to ask for money anyway, right? I mean, there's no way we're going to avoid fundraising uh, in that way. We also started up from scratch and have no endowment, so you know, one way or another, we'd be asking people for money. Our public programs make that easy and fun, right? It's it's wonderful to feel like we are giving to the community, you know, especially the community of of, uh, of Tolkien and you know, sort of fantasy and sci-fi fandom, um, and uh, and therefore really just asking them to give back rather than you know going around and begging. Um, so it's just that whole system has made me so happy. Uh, I've been really really enjoying it. Um, now, of course, as, as you as you likely know, so far our public programs have been in three primary categories. We've had the Silmarillion Film Project through my Tolkien Professor podcast, um, which has been which has been going very very well. We've started season two. We're uh, we're, we're just about to begin planning uh, the Awakening of the Elves at Quivienin. Uh, the fan participation in that has been really flourishing. Through the end of season one, we have uh, people pouring lots and lots of time uh, into developing ideas and designing things and drawing things and composing music and writing plot outlines and everything else it's been it's been uh, it's been really fun um, uh, so that's been that's been really flourishing as a real community activity the Mythgard Academy of course which is still going strong in its third year now um, and that's been really great I've been really having fun uh, as we've especially we've kind of gotten uh, kind of past the usual suspects a little bit I've loved our trip through the history of Middle Earth. So looking forward to the Lost Road, which is next. Um, so glad to do classes like Dracula, uh, Jonathan Strange, and Mr. Norrell, which I've never read before and which I now absolutely love. Um, Curtis uh, Wayant is excited about Ursula Le Guin. Me too. I'm actually I, I I've never read Dispossessed before, Curtis. Uh, I'm currently reading it now for the first time. It's pretty, uh, it's very impressive. I'm I'm looking forward to. Uh, uh, to talking about it. So anyways, the Mythgard Academy has been great. Um, and of course, this past year really saw the birth of a, of a new area of our public programming, and that is in the in the video game world of the Lord of the Rings Online. Um, and this has been really successful. This, you know, we've been, uh, Mythgard has been really embraced uh, by the community there in some really fun and exciting ways. Um, and, uh, you know, basically that that initiative has been primarily... Um, inspired by, okay, part of it was inspired by the fact that I was playing Lotro anyway, so we might as well make it official, but no, no, seriously though, um, inspired by the fact that like, here's this group of very active Tolkien fans, um, and you know, we want to connect with them, you know, we wanted to engage, we wanted to basically introduce ourselves to them, um, and it's been great, we do a lot of in-game activity, we've We've got a kinship in the game. It's really fun to go around in Lotro, and then you see a character run by with the with 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 Mythgard under their names, right? Because they're in the Mythgard kinship. Um, we do so. We do in-game activities together uh, uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I do my weekly stream where I do a live stream of the game as I play it, and I answer lore questions and talk about the um, the the adaptation um, within the game uh, from Tolkien's books. It's really really cool stuff. Um, fortunately, I really admire Lotro and the work that they do. One of the most brilliant adaptations of Tolkien's work that I've seen in any media. So that's uh, uh, that's been that's been useful. 
But of course, the whole Lojo experience has also kind of rem- been a reminder of how many Tolkien fans have still never heard of Mythgard or my podcast or anything, right? Uh, I mean, there's times that, you know, uh, Kay, Ben Abraham, who's here tonight, uh, Trish Lambert, who's not, they've been very much involved. Uh, Trish especially has been sort of the cornerstone of our uh, of our activities there. Kay's been a wonderful help. Um, uh, and they'll both tell you how much fun it is uh, to be in the chat room when I'm doing my Twitch stream and people will come and they'll just be discovering everything brand new and they'll be like, you know, who's this Tolkien professor guy and what's going on here, right? And it's just, it's like, hey, there's just, you know, all these new people who don't know anything about us or what we do. And of course, here we are at Signum and like we feel that we have, and I think you can't even, it's not even really that arguable, you know, that we have the, the best Tolkien studies program in the world. I mean, you can't, do the kind of program of studies and Tolkien studies that we offer anywhere else in the world. Um, uh, and still, so many Tolkien fans don't even know it exists, right? Uh, and of course, beyond Tolkien fans, we're beginning um, our relationship with uh, the, Lord of, the Lord of the Rings online community has been so good, we're beginning to branch out to, to other gaming communities um, and seeing if you know, we, can, uh, we can establish some fo- footholds in other places as well. Um, so that's been that's been really really great. However, this summer we're going to launch a new program, a fourth initiative in our public programs, on top of all the other things that we're doing. Um, and our goal with our new program is not to reach a new audience, but to fill a particular niche for our existing audience. I'm sure we will reach others as well, but but it's primarily our longtime people that I'm thinking of here. One consequence, of course, to the changes in our academic program is that there are going to be fewer new courses to audit, right? I mean, there's only going to be one or two new courses a term, and many of you who have been around in auditing for a long time, of course, have already audited most of those other classes that are going to be filling our, um, uh, that are going to be filling our, our uh, you know, course rotations over the, over the coming semesters. And if you are one of those people, if you are one of our dedicated auditors who, don't, who doesn't take classes for credit, but who who audits with us very regularly, admit it. You're probably like a little bit disappointed when I describe the changes that are going to be happening, right? You know, because it just there wasn't going to be as much, uh, because I know that people who are auditing our classes voraciously um, are people who are most liking the, like, always new classes coming along every semester thing, right? Um, Well, the new program that I'm going to explain, the new public program that we're going to be doing is really designed with you guys in mind, okay? Um, I want to give our wonderful auditors another intellectually meaty program uh, that they can get excited about, uh, even if there are going to be fewer new courses within our MA program uh, as we move forward. So this summer, uh, we're going to introduce what I'm calling Signum Seminars. Now, really, this isn't completely new. Uh, We're going to be building this on the foundation of the great work done by Serena Higgins with the guest lecture series over the last couple years. But what we're doing now um, is is a little different. We're going to be doing a series of multi-part seminars taught by distinguished guest professors. So not just me. Mythgard Academy has been me all the time, right? We're going to be bringing in distinguished guest people, and and they're going to be doing multi-part seminars. So not just one-off lectures, but they're going to be doing like little mini classes, basically. Um, You know, maybe you know, a session a week for two, three, four weeks, something like that, um, where you're really going to get a chance to, to dig into something much more than you would uh, in a lecture, but it's also nothing like the commitment of a semester class or even a Mythgard Academy class. Um, so uh, anyway, so this should, be, this should be a lot of fun. This summer, we're beginning our first series uh, of these seminars is a series that I'm calling Tolkien's New Books. Uh, we're going to have... Four, I'm planning four seminars so far um, between basically July and the end of the year. Um, they'll be kind of spaced out in there. And one is going to, and so the, the first one is going to be on the new book. Wait, I have it right here. Yes, A Secret Vice, uh, edited by, uh, by Andrew Higgins and Demetra Femi. And uh, uh, Andrew Higgins and Demetra Femi are going to be teaching this seminar on their book uh, to tell us about, you know, to, 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 it's going to be, I think, a three-part seminar they're going to do on A Secret Vice. Um, in part, of course, this is designed also to follow up on the, imag- on the, uh, the Imagine Languages classes 
class that uh, uh, that Dr. Higgins taught uh, this past spring. Um, so of course, all the students who took that class are going to be invited to come back and do the follow-up sessions here uh, on a secret vice. Um, uh, but uh, ha, oh, oh, Dan is jealous. How did I get a copy of this? Huh? You can't find it anywhere. Of course you can't, Dan. Not available in America, right? But I know the author. He mailed me one from England because he's such a good guy. Uh, but don't you worry, Dan. You're, uh, they will be they will be available in America. Uh, in, I think in the first week of July. So soon after they're available in America is when the seminar. So this this one will be hot off the American presses uh, when we have our first seminar. So uh, so Dr. Higgins and Dr. Femi will be doing their seminar on a secret vice later on, end of the summer, maybe September ish, something like that. We're going to have another seminar series on the fall of Arthur, uh, and that's going to be taught by Leonard Niedorf of Harvard University, um, uh, who is doing he's doing a. a, a seminar series on Arthurian literature at Harvard this summer. I uh, was really interested to follow it up uh, with a Mythgard series. Uh, so he's going to do a Fall of Arthur uh, with us uh, uh, after that. Then we're going to have one on the uh, the new Kulervo book. And we are, in fact, going to get Verlin Flieger herself, the editor of that book, to uh, uh, to be to do that class. So again, you want to you want to learn more about uh, the Kalevala and so Tolkien's earliest work uh, of fiction. Uh, we'll get the Kalevala uh, or the Kulervo rather uh, seminar uh, by Verlin Flieger, and then after that, we are going to have what I know many of you were secretly hoping for, in which I am delighted to say we're going to be able to offer a seminar on Beowulf uh, by Tom Shippey. Uh, Tom Shippey has agreed to do a three-part um, a three-part seminar series on uh, uh, Tolkien's Beowulf, which of course came out not too long ago. So Secret Advice, Fall of Arthur, Cooler Vote, and Beowulf. We will have a seminar series on each one of those uh, moving forward here through through the end of the year. So doesn't that sound like fun, right? So uh, Mythgard Academy is still going to go on. You know, Lotro stuff is still going to be happening. Film film will be proceeding on schedule. But also, we're going to have uh, we're going to have this other series on top of these things. Um, Cynthia says, "What about Seeger and Gudrun?" Oh boy, uh, 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 greedy much, Cynthia? No, I, I, I'm working on that. I hope to I hope to follow that up too. Uh, I have a I have a, a an idea uh, for that one as well. I have a lead on somebody I think would do a great job with the Seeger and Gudrun uh, uh, seminar series. So um, anyway, okay. Now, let me explain the situation here, how, how this is going to work. Now, obviously, okay, so these seminars are going to be free to everybody. Again, they're going to be free to, you know, we're not going to pay, sell tickets to attend. Uh, they're going to be free to download, just like the Mythgard Academy. But of course, you know, whenever we bring in distinguished guest lecturers like this, there's some additional cost involved. I mean, I always want to show our gratitude uh, to our professors. Um, you know, I'm not going to, uh, I, 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 you know, we all love Tom Shippey, and I, I love and respect him too much to come to him and be like, and by the way, could you do it for free? Um, I, you know, we, we want to we want to show our gratitude uh, to our wonderful guest faculty. Um, this means, of course, there's the, these the, there's always cost involved with all of our free programs. There's a little extra cost involved uh, with these free programs, um, but I still want to keep them free. I don't want to I don't want to have tuition. I don't want to sell tickets. Um, what I'm going to do is my plan is to do sort of a, a, a little mini fundraising campaign uh, for each of these seminar series to raise money to cover the costs and, and to help support Signum. Um, and it's a very modest. My idea is to, to raise $2,000 uh, for each seminar as we go. Attendance is going to be free, I guess, and I'm not going to sell tickets, but I am going to, we're going to have sort of a suggested donation. Um, you know, we're going to suggest people might want to donate uh, like $20 uh, to attend this, not per session, but like for the seminar series. Um, and we're not talking, we're not talking about a lot, but that would, that would go really far towards, um, uh, towards, um, uh, covering our costs and, and, and helping to support us. I'm also think, thinking about some things like a, like a, like a VIP pass, right? If you donate at a certain level, you know, maybe you could come in and engage in some audio discussion. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring you in as a panelist and, and, and you can ask questions and have some discussion with our guest speaker, something like that. I don't know. I'm still kind of still kind of thinking about that a little bit. Maybe like a VIP season pass. I don't know. Uh, but uh, you know, more on that soon. But uh, and so there there is going to be a fundraising angle 
uh, on all of these because, again, we really need to in order to make these things happen. All of our free programs, of course, are not free at all. Uh, and we pay thousands of dollars a year to support all of our free programs. Uh, so we very much rely on uh, the generosity of the people who are enjoying them very much. Um, uh, but wait, there's more. Uh, and kind of coming back around in a way to our academic program, we're also starting a new program with our full credit classes. So this isn't one of our free programs, but I, I bring it up now because it's kind of first cousin to them. That is, it's another way for us to sort of reach out um, to to people with our with our programs and with our and, and with our with our stuff. Um, as a result of the changes to the academic program that I already talked about, we're going to be able to launch a program that I've been looking forward to and wanted to do for a long time now, and that is certificate programs. Because here's the thing. I know, I mean, I run a master's degree program, but I am well aware of the fact that, like, the vast majority of people in the world don't really need an MA. Like, their lives won't really be revolutionized if they have a master's of arts in literature and language. I get that. Um, and many people have said that over the years, like, oh, your classes sound so cool, but I don't really need an MA, right? Um, so, like, it's not for me. But no, it could be for you, actually. And so, so what we're doing in our certificate programs... Um, People are going to be taking the same courses, getting the same credit, just working towards a different goal. People who want to study and gain expertise in these fields that they love, we want people to be able to learn what they love, right? Um, we'll be able to work towards this non-degree certificate. Uh, you take five courses, at least four, uh, in the concentration of your choice, uh, and you uh, you get a concentration. You get one of our uh, one of our certificates. So just. Looking for a second at this, you might have noticed this menu option before, which I skipped over uh, at the time, um, our certificate program. Um, so you can get more information here. You can see right now we have one for each of our major concentrations, as you saw before. Um, we may be, um, um, we've got, you know, our, our, our Q&A questions down here at the end, our, our, our FAQ for our certificate program. So if you do know people who are, you know, really enthusiastic about fantasy, science fiction, Tolkien studies, uh, uh, languages, you know, really they're gung-ho about Anglo-Saxon and Old Norse and the Germanic philology thing, um, then, you know, invite them to consider just, you know, they don't have to enroll in the full MA program, just, just uh, uh, enroll to get a certificate. It's the same application as for the MA program, there'll just be an option to designate um, uh, I'm applying for the certificate program rather than for uh, uh, for the master's degree program, um, and you can see look at our look at our shiny new concentration pages. Ah, the Germanic philology page, right? What um, what classes do we have here? Uh -huh. the classes that we are committing to offer uh, every every other year. Um, yes, sir. Also developing some new classes, uh, like a follow-up philology two class, for instance, might be something that comes up before too very long. Um, yeah, yeah. And wait a second here. Hang on. Let's go back. And the imaginative literature concentration. So Gowan and the Green Knight class, Tom. That would be cool. That would be very cool. Oh, oh, wait, hang on. Uh, here. Uh, that's what I wanted. That's right. And just check out this list of classes down here. Oh, yeah. Now, as you'll notice, this list of classes is very long because, of course, our imaginative, our imaginative literature concentration is much broader uh, than... I, you know, it's it's it kind of casts a wider net than Tolkien studies specifically, or even Germanic philology. Um, so, a lot more of our courses. And of course, if you were interested in an imagine to in, in an imaginative lit concentration, of course, many of our Tolkien classes as well could also be counted towards your concentration. Um, so uh, you can kind of mix and match there a little bit because this list is longer. These won't all necessarily be offered every two years. Some of these might take three years to come around again because there's so many but uh, but we still are going to be cycling through these uh, regularly 
Anyway, okay. So the certificate program. So think about the certificate program again um, for, for people who are interested in, in really digging in and taking classes, but but to whom a master's degree seems, you know, irrelevant or, you know, just too much. It's just gilding the lily, you know. Um, okay, and that's it. This is that, this is your, that, 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 this conclude your glimpse at the new world of uh, Signum University as the, the, that is uh, that is coming down the pipe. Um, any final questions? Now, Kit has a great question. And good to see you, Kit. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, uh, is, she's interested in uh, 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 other classes, like uh, other language classes, uh, specifically Greek and Italian, both uh, ones that I would like to do, Kit, and I would like to do Italian uh, really almost entirely so that we could then offer a Dante class afterwards. I would love to see a cycle of introductory Italian classes, then leading to a Divine Comedy translation seminar like the Beowulf translation seminar. Um, the sequence that we have in Anglo-Saxon I'm really fond of, the intro to Anglo-Saxon, the Beowulf translation seminar, and the and then the, 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 the broader Tom Shippey Beowulf lecture series. I would love to have that same kind of thing with Old Norse, um, uh, uh, to do that, to be able to do that same thing with Homer in Greek, to be able to do that with Dante. Um, uh, uh, we have we have Latin. I'm I'm hoping uh, to be able to push for a uh, uh, an Aeneid um, translation seminar. Uh, that would be that would be really fun. So anyway, okay. So um, uh, yes, yes, Tim, uh, with the old Norse class. Yes, uh, uh, the Eddas. Absolutely. Yes, yes. That's just just the kind of thing that I'm thinking that I'm hoping we're going to be able to be we're we're, we're going to begin building uh, down the road. Um, it has always been our hope that our language courses, to this point, our language classes have been too much an addendum, right? Here's our literature classes, and there's also a language class that you should also take, right? I want to integrate those more. That's why we're called the Literature and Language Department instead of segregating those. Um, so, yep, yep, we have plans for those. Uh, the new Old Norse class is our first step towards, uh, towards expanding these things. We hope to, to continue. Uh, to expand uh, those offerings as we move forward. So uh, I, I can't I, I can't give you a time frame exactly, but that's definitely that's definitely in the plans. Other questions before I uh, before I finally let people sleep here. Final questions. Uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, Andre says a dedicated Sigma page on LinkedIn would be nice. Yeah, I'll have to talk to I'll have to talk with our are people that, uh, about building more of a LinkedIn presence. I've started to use LinkedIn recently, but I still don't use it that much. Uh, I should, though. At least I feel that I should. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's something we should do. Yeah, yeah. Curtis making notes. Yep, agreed. Yeah, we definitely need to do that. Yeah, good. Other thoughts, questions? Okay, well then I'll just end by thanking you guys again for joining us on this wild ride that has been the life of Signum University to date. Uh, and I hope that you feel or sort of begin to feel as time moves forward here that, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the sort of youthful program that has, you know, gone through all of, uh, you know, it, it's gone through its share of, of growing pains and things over the last few years. Um, you know that that I, I hope you will feel that you know you are you are seeing the fruit of continuing to uh, to support and help us as we move forward, and that uh, you will see uh, in reality as we move forward as as, as clearly as I see uh, in concept here, looking towards this next year, how we're going to be uh, uh, growing and operating in so many new and exciting ways. So thanks very much for having. Uh, been with us on this journey so far and uh, and uh, and continuing as we move forward and I hope that this is going to be a program that you guys are going to be even more proud of and more excited about uh, and uh, you know and more uh, one that will be even that will be easier than ever before to uh, to tell other people about and invite other people to thanks very much everybody again for all that you do and I am excited for another year thanks very much everybody bye now